How's it going, everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins, and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Canada. Today, we're going to be taking you on a journey into the intriguing world of Canadian numismatics, where even the most ordinary looking coins can be worth insane amounts of money. Enter the 1968 Canadian Dimes. Now, you might be asking, why would a Canadian dime from the year 1968 be so special? Is it because it was the last year for silver, or maybe because it was the first year for Canadian dimes being composed of nickel? Well, my friends, you might actually be surprised to know that in the year 1968, when making the switch in composition on coinage from silver to nickel, the Canadian Mint became overburdened and commissioned the Philadelphia Mint in the United States to produce a quantity of dimes to fulfill the production quota for the initial year of this new composition. Because of this, there are actually two different versions of Canadian 1968 nickel dimes, some of which were produced in Canada and some in the United States, and some of these can actually be worth some pretty decent money. In this video, we will explore the historical context surrounding the production of these rare coins and delve into why they hold such importance in Canadian numismatic history. Additionally, we will discuss any distinguishing and identifying features, their significance among collectors, and also potential value if you are ever to find a legitimate example. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. Also, make sure to stay to the end of the video if you'd like to find out how much you could get for this coin if you were ever to discover one. And then without further ado, what do you say we get right into it and discuss the Canadian 1968 Dimes? Let's get it, guys. In the year 1968, Canada underwent a significant change in the composition of its 10-cent coins, commonly known as dimes. The Minister of Finance at the time reported that due to a critical shortage of coins in Canada, he had authorized the minting of 75 million 10-cent coins in the United States. This decision was made because the Canadian Mint was fully stretched in addressing the shortage of quarters and was unable to meet the additional production requirements for 10-cent pieces. The difficult task of switching the composition from Canadian coinage from silver to nickel likely prompted the government to seek external assistance and the United States Mint was contracted to produce a substantial quantity of 10 cent coins. This move was only a temporary measure to alleviate the pressing need for circulating currency in Canada. One significant aspect of the 1968 Canadian dimes is the change in composition. Before 1968, Canadian dimes along with some other denominations including quarters and half dollars were primarily made of silver. However, as a cost-saving measure and due to the rising price of silver, the composition of Canadian dimes was switched from silver to nickel in the year 1968. This change also had a noticeable impact on the appearance and metal content of the coins. The switch to nickel composition for Canadian dimes in 1968 marked a broader trend in many countries moving away from silver coins due to economic considerations. The new composition provided a more cost-effective alternative while still maintaining the functionality of the coins in daily transactions. The decision to authorize the minting of these Canadian dimes in the United States and the shift in composition from silver to nickel in 1968 were driven by practical considerations and economic factors reflecting the changing landscape of currency production during that time. Now let's discuss how to identify and differentiate between the Ottawa and Philadelphia 1968 Canadian dimes. The reading on the side of a coin which consists of raised vertical edges is a distinct feature that can be used to identify and differentiate between coins minted in different facilities. In the case of the 1968 Canadian dimes, those struck at the Philadelphia Mint and Ottawa Mint can be distinguished by examining the characteristics of the reading. The dimes minted at the Philadelphia Mint, the reading will typically exhibit shorter notches that are spread farther apart. This means that the vertical ridges on the edge of the coin are shorter in length and the spaces between them are wider when compared to dimes struck at the Canadian Mint. Dimes struck at the Ottawa Mint feature larger notches in the reading and these notches are spread closer together. This results in longer and more closely spaced vertical ridges on the edge of the coin. The specific arrangement and length of the reading serve as a distinctive hallmark for coins produced at the Royal Canadian Mint. 
By examining the reading pattern, numismatists and collectors can identify the mint of origin for a given 1968 Canadian dime, distinguishing between those struck at the Philadelphia Mint and those minted in Ottawa. This level of detail adds an additional layer of nuance for individuals interested in the history and characteristics of coins from different mint facilities. An official statement was released by the Privy Council Office on August 21st, 1968. The Minister of Finance reported that he had authorized the minting of 75 million 10 cent coins in the United States. This was necessary to alleviate a critical shortage of coins in Canada. The Canadian Mint was fully extended in making up the shortage of quarters and could not meet the additional production requirements to provide an adequate quantity of 10 cent pieces. The cabinet noted the report of the Minister of Finance to the effect that he had authorized the minting of 75 million 10 cent pieces in the United States. And that is a quote from O.G. Stoner, Deputy Secretary to the Cabinet. O.G. Stoner, that is an interesting name. There are three separate mintage figures for the Canadian 1968 dimes. There's the Philadelphia, the Ottawa, and the Silver, which was only struck in the Ottawa facility. So first, there's 85,170,000 of the Philadelphia. There's 87,412,930 struck in Ottawa and 70,460,000 of the silver 1968 Canadian dimes. Some of the details and specifications for the 1968 Philadelphia. It is composed of 100% nickel. It has a weight of 2.07 grams, a diameter of 18.03 millimeters, and a thickness of 1.16 millimeters. The coin was designed and engraved by Arnold Machen for the obverse and Emmanuel Hahn for the reverse. The edge is reeded, it is magnetic, and it has a die axis in metal alignment as is the standard for most Canadian, British, and Australian coins. Now, in terms of value, the 1968 Philadelphia Mint, if you can identify it, is actually a pretty interesting case because it is not as valuable on the low end as the Ottawa 1968 Canadian 10 cent coin. The silver, of course, you will get melt value for, so it is probably the most valuable if you do happen to find one and it is beat up worn and been put through the meat grinder. But if you want to get the maximum amount of money for a Canadian 1968 dime, you want to identify the Philadelphia Mint and hope for a high mint state example. Now, if you can identify the Philadelphia Mint 1968, which will have shorter notches that are spread farther apart on the reading, it can be worth all the way up to $425 for an MS66 example. I have actually found Canadian 1968 dimes composed of nickel that are in a high mint state, maybe not MS67, but definitely pushing MS63 to MS65, so I don't doubt if you kept your eyes open, you can maybe find one of these, especially if you busted open a full uncirculated roll of 1968 Canadian dimes. I know there's got to be a few of them still out there, whether they're sitting in coin shops or maybe in the vaults of banks. So just to give you guys an idea in comparison, the 1968 that was struck at the Ottawa facility in Canada is worth around $61 for an MS66. So $425 for the Philadelphia and $61 for the Ottawa Mint. At the high end, it makes the Philadelphia Mint a lot more desirable and valuable, and it's a pretty easy one to identify as well. You just want to throw this under the microscope and inspect the reading. Now, what do you guys think about these 1968 dimes? What would you do if you ever found a legitimate example or if you ever have found any of the coins mentioned in this video? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. Also, don't forget to smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay in the loop with my new content as it is being released. But I think that is pretty much going to do it for today. So thank you all so, so much for watching. But until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one.